some fun. Um, part two. Part two. All right, Ryan. You see, you, you know, you've made it to Starbucks. I haven't. I, I, I actually, I realized when I got to my fancy Nespresso thing this morning, no half and half. That was, uh-huh. that, and you know when you look around for someone to blame? And, and I look at the cat and the dog and the fish, and because and, I'm living in this apartment on my own. Kids aren't here right now. And uh-huh. and I was like, shoot, no cream. So, um, but there is a Starbucks opposite, but then I, I, uh, I will make it to that. I was end. almost going to have to delay our interview because uh, Starbucks claim is a little large. Where are you right now? Uh, Winter Park, Florida. Oh, okay. Just north of Orlando. Wow. Wow, that I bet that was that was always on the wish list when you were growing up, wasn't it? Well, uh, I but you just, like it there, don't you? I love it here. Um, but you know, it's funny because my uh, my first deal in the states was in 2002 with Mike Shank Racing. Yeah, and uh, you know, so I'm like, I'm going to go live this glorious life, the glamorous racing that I always dreamt of. Um, I had been to a couple of Dario's races. I'd been to Houston. I'd been to Laguna Seca. And I was like, this is it. I made it. Yeah. So I came over for my first test. And uh, it was uh, like November or December of 2001. And it was in Rolling Road, Savannah. So I landed Very at- like Laguna Seca. Very, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking everything's Hollywood and Miami and New York. So I, I land in Orlando, which actually my mom and dad um, had an apartment here. Um, they had a vacation uh, place, timeshare. And so I land in Orlando, you know, say hi, mom and dad. I said, I've got to go do my glorious test. And uh, I go up there and was just blown away by the fact that there's pretty much nothing between leaving Orlando and Savannah. Yeah. Um, that was my, my first reality check of being in America and I think just how big and open everything is. Um, so then we, you know, I go home for Christmas, we do the deal to come back and race Atlantics in 2002. And uh, I fly to uh, Columbus, Ohio, to Mike Shank's place. It's January or February. It's freaking cold and wet and miserable. I get off the plane and I literally, I'm done. There's no way I'm doing this. The plan was to, to live there, have an apartment near the shop, hang out, do all that stuff that young drivers are meant to do and be team leaders and- Yep, you know. bonding. No, I, I pretty much, did my seat, got on a plane, flew back to Orlando and never left. But that's the thing, isn't it? People are, they, here's, here's what I find quite interesting for our young, the young generation, the ones that are coming through like little program robots right now. Yeah. That, you know, from the minute they can get on a simulator, they're being groomed. The parents are putting millions of dollars in if they've got them. Uh, the commercial pressure on these kids is so great. But it's almost like they're doing it purely for the finite goal of becoming a rich, famous racing driver, you know what I mean? And getting to Formula One or whatever. And as you know, that there's a couple of ste- there's a couple of seats at the top of that ladder. I think it's a very troubling pyramid, really. Yeah. Um, and I think to myself, it's almost like no one goes into it, I think, for the romance or the, the spirit of purely just being a racing driver anymore. And then, especially in my dad's era, I mean, it was different for you even, looking at Dario and everyone. My dad's era, they never thought they'd make money at it, right? Yeah, they just did it because wow, shoot, we can drive cars fast. Um, what do you think? Is is the romance of our sport dead, or is it is is that what is the underlying current in the end? I I think that you know a couple of things. I'm one of those guys that I was fortunate. My dad was pretty successful. He could get me started. He got mm-hmm. me to the point where I had to make a decision. What do I do? Um, and that was the point where we had no more budget to race in Europe. The costs were out of control in Formula 3. Yeah. And I came to America and ran a fourth car with Shank where a bunch of his investors paid majority of the bill. And it was an average season. Yeah. Uh, but my childhood was surrounded by cars, okay. like toy cars and cars on the wall. And, you know, I still remember my... Uh, you know, test rolls, a Countach picture was on the wall. It has to have a Countach. That was the area. Yeah. If you didn't have, was it white? My one was white poster. Of course it was white. Yeah, yeah. Far force it might have been somewhere near it too, actually. I can see your dog in the background now. Okay, oh, there's the dog. Yeah. Um, God, dog. Now, so like my, I know what you're saying because now that I coach a lot of kids and I, I help out Patron with their lights team and 
you know, I, I look at 17 and 18 year old kids now, and to be honest, they're more interested in having, I think, the persona of a racing driver and what comes along with it. Yeah. And they assume that there's going to be women involved and all this stuff and this glamorous life that it really is not like that to us. But yeah, I don't see the passion that there once was. You know, there's a couple of kids in Scotland that Dari and I have helped. The one kid has done really well, Kieran. And Kieran's one of those kids that eats, sleeps, breathes racing. There's nothing else in his life. If he's not training, he's at the race shop or he's at the cart shop or he's in his go-kart. And I think there still is those kids out there, but I think we've lost a lot of it. And yeah. unfortunately, I think the, the whole simulator era, um, I think because there's been some success with a couple of these drivers and now it's just snowballed. And I, you know. Everybody's got to do it. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I think that there's only so much you can learn uh, without having life experience and real racing experience. And the fact that when you do crash or you hurt someone else, it hurts. There's yep. no the reset button. We start again. No. Um, so I, I, it's unfortunate that some of that is, is not there anymore. But I do have a cool story for you. You'll like this. Uh, speaking of your dad, like I said, I was, I was fortunate. My, my, dad was, I, my dad was a nut job. I mean, okay. anybody who knows him will tell you that. And my dad would spend every last dollar he had to make sure that he gave me the best opportunities in racing. But at one time... Uh, What's your dad's name? John, John. G-O-H-N. My dad bought me... Uh, what was the car your dad drove that had the Jules sponsorship? It, that was a... Uh, it, was a Porsche, uh, it was a nine. Wasn't it called the nine thirty six? Uh, I, I think it was. Yeah. And the yeah, Jules it was Porsche. him and it was X, right? In the yeah, car. Him and X. Yeah. Have the so, right here. have you ever seen the miniature cars that they build of that? Yeah. With the Briggs and Stratton. You didn't have one of those. Not only did I have one, my dad donated it to a friend back in. Oh, this would have been. I mean, we're talking. I was nine, ten years old when I had it. Yeah, and uh, we gave it away, and the guy repainted it bright yellow, all this crazy stuff. Put it in a restaurant. It was in a sports bar in Glasgow. Nice. We had it. Not nice because you know how much they're worth now. Uh, like a hundred thousand. I heard recently. A hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they are like huge collectors' items, and it yeah. it literally kills me every time I see that car on TV, or I oh, every no. time I see your dad driving something. I'm like. God, what were we thinking? That but that's why I, I grew up and everything in my life was cars and it was Le Mans or it was Formula One and IndyCar. There was nothing else. You know, I, I managed to avoid all these dirty women that run around high schools for how, a short how, time. Did you, did you hopefully not complete, hopefully you were yeah. unsuccessful in all your avoiding. I avoided it all at the right time. Perfect. Yeah, that's I avoided right all the, the school parties and, and got my kind of career on track and, and then I made up for it. Yeah, that's true. Hey, talking about that, are you, are you married to an English or a, a European woman? American. American. My wife is from Sebring. Yep. Wow. That, well, uh, did you notice that I was lost? I've never, ever, ever I, heard those words. I know. Ever. It's actually Lake Placid, but uh, moved to Sebring later in life. Wow. And then moved out of Sebring when she got her driver's license. As you would. Wow. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm in Orlando. She's a Floridian. Uh, that is fantastic. So the one thing, though, which I will, will think about as we look forward to Daytona, forwards to Daytona, um, I've been all over the world like you have racing. There is something cool about the American race fan, though. I will, you know, that, and that is what you didn't have in WEC unless you were in certain races. As one of the drivers put it to me, you're like in these extraordinary stadiums driving for just a couple of fans in the stands. But here we have a fan base and, and, and I think IMSA certainly are in touch with that fan base. You feel it, right? You go to Daytona and you know on the grid you're part of something special. Well, Daytona's special for me, uh, you know, for a number of reasons. Um, before I even to be honest, had my sights set on sports car racing. I had some friends over on vacation. One of them was a NASCAR fan. I wanted to go check out Daytona. I'm like, all right, we'll go check it out. Yeah. Um, I will never, ever forget the first time. I was the full tourist attraction. 
Oh, went did. under the tunnel in the tram. And <laughs> I remember popping up the other side. And that first time in the Daytona just blows your mind. I mean, the size of the place. It gave me goosebumps just even then. Yeah. Um, but then I don't think I fully appreciated Daytona and what it was until I won it. Uh, got close. We were second in 2007. And then 2010 when I won it with Action Express was a real you know, low point leading up to that because I was completely unemployed from 2009. I went through a freaking scam Ponzi scheme during that season. And uh, so the whole racing thing was just crumbling from under me. Yeah. Um, and so going and winning it and that pretty much just vaulted me into... And it changed your whole career at that point. Changed it changed everything. You yeah. know, Daytona, I will forever hold is the point in my career that changed everything. And... Uh, you know, it's special for me for that, and it's special because it's a home race of mine. Yeah. Um, you know, my my father-in-law uh, passed away the day before the race two years ago. So it's just there's a lot of parts to Daytona that are just really close to me, but I love it. I get, I mean, virtually when the season finishes, I'm excited for Daytona. Yeah. So how do you get ready for it? Let, let's think, think about that because you've won it. You've been close to winning it. You've led it a lot. Um it's really such a simple track, isn't it? It's not a complicated <laughs> track. You go, you go. Well, how come he's quicker? Or how come I'm quick? I mean, if you break it down, if you're coaching someone, yeah, it, it's it, corners. It, yeah, well, there you are. You got that, and you go left, and you go, uh, yeah. Just don't hit the pit wall on the way out. I mean, but like all simple things, to excel on it requires just that little bit extra. What is it? You then? know, it's um, it's it's like the oval mentality. You know the. The more trim you can be with the arrow, the lighter you can be with the arrow, the faster the car is going to go, but the more of a handful it becomes. And I think it's that fine balance of making sure uh, the car is trim and then finding the balance in the infield. And that's what's hard about Daytona. It's You have to have a car that mechanically grip-wise is really good because there's more time to lose in the infield than there is in the banking. It's amazing. On the test recently, we... Uh, we struggled a little bit on the first day and uh you know once we we split up all the sectors we were like the second fastest car in a straight line um this was with a visit florida corvette yeah. and then in the infield we were second off and you think so how can you be a second off when you only break three times <laughs> but uh it, it's a it's a difficult track and it changes a lot i mean just through not only through the race week but just the race itself from 3 p.m to 3 p.m you go on a roller coaster of, you do one stint and you'll be like, the car's fantastic. You get back in three hours time and all of a sudden you're shouting at one of your teammates hit somebody because the car's now all of a sudden crap. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a weird place. And but the it's, temperature and we've, the, I mean, it's, it's a every, freaky place and everyone goes in it. I mean, you live there, but you know, you know, you remember it's like packing to go yeah. to Daytona for the Rolex. You go, well, I might need a ski. I might actually need an Arctic jacket. Yeah. Uh, and I definitely need a, a beanie. It's cold when you get out of the car. I mean, or uh, it could shorts. be pretty mild. Or shorts. Yeah. No, it's uh, I, it's just it's a, a unique race. And um, of all the, you know, I've done a number of 24 hour races now, and I, I don't think there's anywhere that changes as much for the driver as Daytona does. I mean, Le Mans gets better and better. Yes. It, it's a very it different. You, you know, it's the opposite of Daytona. When the sun goes down at Daytona, all hell breaks loose. I mean, Le Mans is only a five-hour night. Yeah. Here, it feels like a 15-hour night. Pretty much is. You know. Hey, you're driving with some cool guys, though. You've got great teammates. Yeah, great teammates. And uh, for the first time ever, it's probably the time where I'd say it's like everybody's a friend. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's always one teammate that you think is kind of a, a dick. Yeah, um, But, you know, you, you suck it up and say, well, they're good enough. We'll keep them on here. Snug race suits. That's what I am going to say. Snug. I, you know, I've heard that from a couple people now. I, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Christmas and New Year, there was a, a fair amount of eating and yeah, because trimming out. We talk about trimming out the car. Yeah. I'm gonna say this nicely. If you were, if you were still in the bakery business, mm -hmm. eating fried Mars bars, would Ryan? Could Ryan be a little porky? If oh, you, easily. You could. My my problem is I still have my sweet tooth, and so. I'm also one of these drivers who. You know, if you're if you're happy in the head, then you're generally happy. Yeah. And uh, I'm not happy when I'm eating rabbit food and grass. <laughs> um, 
So you'll get more out of me if I'm five pounds heavier than my ultimate weight, yeah. uh, and I'm gonna eat whatever I think makes me feel good. So, but we did have a laugh. We we all went to the shop on it was January fifth or sixth. We went to do our seat fit, the three guys, and we all went to lunch, and all three of us were like salad, salad, salad. And I know those guys well enough, especially Mark, that. That's it's not unheard of. We went to a Mexican place and we had salads and we all kind of joked about uh, the fact that we had a bit of a rough off season. So, yeah, we're, we're all trying to get ourselves back in shape now for the race. Should yeah. be good. So, it's only in a week or so. I'm going to let yep. you go. But um, shameless plug. Who's your who, shameless plug? Shameless plug? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, obviously, I'll be with Visit Florida in the Chevy Corvette uh, with Continental Tires. At the IMSA race, the Rolex 24 is at Daytona. Uh, I'll be doing the full season with that car. Uh, unfortunately, just missing one race at Long Beach because I'll be with my other duties, which is the Tequila Petroni SM team uh, doing the white championship. So it'll be a good year, busy year for me. Ryan, I'll see you in Florida. Um, get ready for Daytona. That involves eating and working out, which yes. is a fine recipe. Um, a prediction for the race? Um, well, I think that it's only fair that the Visit Florida car should win in Florida. So uh, I think we're going to have a great race. We had a we had a, a difficult first two days at Daytona, uh, a good last day, and then a really good private test uh, after that. So I think we uh, there's not probably a, a better lineup as far as uh, camaraderie goes and friendships. So really I think cool. we deserve to win personally. I love it. All right, mate. Well, have a good day. What are you doing the rest of the day? Well, I've got a really busy day. See, I thought you were going to do one of these like MTV cribs. You're going to look in my fridge and stuff. Well, no, because I'm not there. If I was there, I would. I would. Oh, see, because we can like, you know. Well, you can. But I've uh, I've been doing a little bit of DIY. Oh, have you? New bedroom furniture. I had to go. I went to Bed Bath and Beyond. We're not uh, in your bedroom right now, though, are we? What's that? We're not in your bedroom right now. We're in your living room. Uh, we're uh, we're going to have to go put up some poles for curtains. Now we get the the dogs down here. She's just having a little uh, sleep. That is. Oh shoot! You got a real dog. I got like a. Yeah, mine's a midget dog. dog. That is beautiful. Uh, anything about you that we should know that we don't? Uh, um, I'm a uh, phenomenal ironer. I love to do laundry and iron. Not even kidding. It's very therapeutic to me. It actually is, and I'm. Don't it's tell anyone. Because we're, we're British. Actually, I like ironing too. It's you know what? It's I a British do. thing. I like I my shirts to be iron. ironed. I do it all. Yeah. A, a little spray starch. No, I'm a bit of a, I'm definitely a house husband, I'm a bit of a clean freak, I like DIY, I like doing all that stuff that you just would not think. You would not think a racing driver uh, would do. Yeah, my preparations for Daytona are hanging curtains today and uh, putting up a new light. You see, things are never as they seem on the surface. Anyway, thanks to Ryan for joining me, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe.